I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite tired of all those new superfoods popping up every season. One day, they, the internet gods, tell us to replace our favorite breakfast with chia seeds and goji berries. Then they recommend to make spirulina rich smoothies daily, topped with papaya, even if you live in a winterland. Then come fancy names that we don't even know how to pronounce yet. Before you know, your grocery bill triples and you're still chronically hungry. And not that all your health problems disappear overnight. Yet, some of the most potent superfoods might be hiding in your grandma's kitchen pantry. So, let's talk about fermented foods, their true health benefits and potential side effects. Hi, my name is Anastasia Sharova and welcome to Happy Bellyfish channel. Here, we answer all your questions about truly healthy foods. So, what are fermented foods exactly? Are all pickles fermented? Well, not really. Though many foods that you're probably eating already could be fermented. It includes yogurt, olives, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, sourdough bread. Coffee, tea, as well as alcoholic drinks are fermented too, though they're a whole different story when it comes to health benefits and risks. We'll talk about them some other time. If you want to get a little technical here, Fermented foods are defined as foods or beverages produced through controlled microbial growth and the conversion of food components through enzymatic action. Wait, before you fall asleep here, let me put it in more simple terms. If you take fresh, unprocessed whole food, let's say a cucumber, and just leave it on the table on its own for days, it will mostly rot. If you take the same cucumber and create a comfortable environment for the good bacteria to thrive, like put it in brine, the cucumber will ferment. During the process of fermentation, which is pure chemistry, the properties of this cucumber will change, and so will its nutritional profile. Thanks to these changes, fermented foods are hailed as superfoods, the major digestive pills and gut health supporters. Without throwing too many big and fancy words here, let's look at what those benefits of fermented foods really are. Number one, fermented foods improve your gut health and digestion. Fermented foods are a source of beneficial lactic acid bacteria and they contain probiotic. This bacteria supports digestive health, reduces digestive issues and restores the balance of bacteria in the gut. Number two, fermented foods support your immune system. Our immune system relies on gut health to function properly. If there is an imbalance in the gut, it affects our immune system right away. A recent study conducted by Stanford School of Medicine showed that a simple change in diet can have a noticeable effect on the gut microbiome and the immune system. Thus, fermented foods improve overall microbial diversity and help fight inflammation, which prevents development of serious chronic diseases. Number three, fermentation process makes it easy to digest and absorb the nutrients. During the fermentation process, the carbohydrates, simple sugars and starches get broken down and hence it makes the food more digestible. A great example here is dairy, where fermentation breaks down the lactose in milk. That's why many experts suggest that if you eat dairy, you should only eat cultured dairy, like yogurt, cheese, or kefir. Number four, fermented foods may boost your mood and reduce anxiety. Recent studies show that boosting the levels of gut microbes, and that's what happens when you eat fermented foods, has been shown to increase dopamine and serotonin that are linked to happiness. Another study showed that probiotic food consumption is associated with lower severity and prevalence of depression. Number five, fermentation increases bioavailability of vitamins and minerals. In other words, our bodies would not be able to absorb vitamins and minerals from certain foods if they were not fermented. For instance, soybeans have a high content of anti-nutrients like phytic acid. While soybeans are rich in iron, phytic acid blocks their absorption. So no matter how many of these beautiful soybeans you eat, if they are not prepared properly, none of these nutrients will actually stay in your body. Fermentation process removes or significantly reduces the amount of these anti-nutrients and makes it easy to absorb all the goodness from the beans. 
That's why traditionally soybeans are actually fermented. Think of such foods like tempeh, miso and soy sauce. Same process happens for instance with grains, and that's why sourdough bread, where the flour is naturally fermented, is the most nutritious bread you can have. By the way, sourdough and its health benefits are one of my most favorite topics. If you'd like me to make a video about it, let me know in the comments and I'll gladly do so. Number 6. Fermented foods control blood pressure, blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Studies have shown that long-term consumption of fermented foods can decrease the level of bad cholesterol. Moreover, fermented foods help block an enzyme that has a connection to raising blood pressure. Overall, probiotics have a modest but beneficial effect on blood pressure. By the way, I'm mentioning a lot of studies here, you can find the links to all of them in the description below. There, you'll also find links to our fermentation challenge, where we actually teach how to make those delicious fermented foods. Number 7. Fermented foods can support bone health and help prevent osteoporosis. During the fermentation process, certain types of bacteria are able to manufacture vitamins, which otherwise would not be present in those foods. One of such vitamins is K2, which helps prevent osteoporosis, promotes bone health and prevents calcium deposits in the arteries. Number 8. Fermented foods can be a source of vital vitamin B12. And this is great news for vegans and vegetarians. Animal foods are considered to be the only source of essential vitamin B12. However, certain types of lactic acid bacteria can manufacture vitamin B12 during the fermentation process. Examples of the foods with this type of bacteria are kimchi, sauerkraut, tempeh and miso. All this sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Should you then go wild and start consuming bowls of kimchi for breakfast? Well, not really. Eating a little every day, just on the side, is more than enough. Yep, regular long-term consumption is what matters. On this channel, I made an entire video on how to eat fermented foods daily. Do check it out. But despite all this wonderful, powerful health benefits of fermented foods, many people still have fears around eating and especially making fermented foods at home. So what are those risks people are afraid of? Well, first, keep in mind that the way your fermented foods were prepared and which ingredients were used matters a lot. For instance, if you have high blood pressure and you want to use fermented foods to lower it, watch out how much salt is inside the foods you eat. Yes, a lot of commercially produced fermented foods have excessive amounts of salt and even sugar to simply make them taste better. There is no other reason. The good news is, salt is not even needed for fermentation, so always look for low sodium and sugar-free ferments or simply make your own at home. On our website, happybellyfish.com, you can find a fermentation challenge where you will learn how to safely make your own fermented foods with the personal support of a fermentation expert. You can also find a few great recipes on this channel for salt-free sauerkraut, fermented carrots and cucumbers. Another health concern is linked to histamine, which is present in fermented foods. Some people have histamine intolerance and in this case they can experience discomfort and side effects after eating things like sauerkraut or miso. But keep in mind that this condition is pretty rare, and if you had it, you'd mostly know about it by now. Many people with less severe cases of histamine intolerance still enjoy fermented foods, yet in moderation. If any of your questions about fermented foods still remain unanswered, please don't be shy and drop them in the comments. Who knows, I might make my next video just about the question you have. Don't forget to subscribe and learn all about wholesome foods and healthy eating with us. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!